Border security in an island context is much different than you would find in a landlocked country. To ensure that our oceans and our nation is secure, it involves a lot of sea patrol, it involves a lot of different ministries and agencies having to work together. You need a holistic approach with immigration, fisheries, customs, everyone involved, policy makers, for a better future for the Marshall Islands. What it would look like if you were managing the borders on a ship is clearance of, of ent entering and departing vessels, which requires uh, immigration officers to board vessels, conduct their uh, entry inspections, and also inspection of vessels to ensure that there aren't individuals that should not be there. We're using a system that the government newly just recently invested in, which is called the Migration Information uh, and Data Analysis System, MIDAS for short. There's mobile units that our officers take on board uh, to carry out their duties. So MIDAS is a software system that was developed and designed to have solutions for divisions of immigration and governments in the most remote places in the world. It's designed to not only the hardware to be very functional, but the software to be very user-friendly and responsive to government needs. How much time has the MIDAS system saved us is a lot of time. Uh, again, that's, it just requires uh, scanning of passports and, and biometrics and photographs, and, and, and that's pretty much it. What we were using prior to, uh, to the MIDAS implementation is uh, it was all manual data entry, manual data gathering, which uh, basically just it was all paper-based. The software allows the government to be able to look at trends, um, see why people are leaving, how long they're going for, so it has a whole host of features. We're a very busy port and a very small workforce. That's probably one of the biggest challenges now. Not having the, the resources to cover all of our bases uh, is always going to be a challenge. Border security is not just people coming and going from the country, but it's also ensuring that there's regulations, policies, and procedures in place that allow um, economic growth and security within the fishery sector. Fisheries and the tuna fishing is one of the main income sources for the Marshall Islands. The opportunity to catch fish has probably slowed down a little bit due to some, some uh, uh, overfishing, I would say. There's real no competing with these vessels. They're the best of the best. Their style of fishing is via net but instead of via rod and reel. We do have our uh, local marine resource authority. They work together with the PNA group. They set you know, fishing days for uh, vessels and so on and so forth. The boats are all marked, they've all got numbers on them and they're also tracked. So they have tracking beacons on them. That's how we are able to tell when they cross a certain borderline and that's when we go out and apply fines and call them in and so on and so forth. Monitoring in such an expansive area as you can easily imagine is very hard. We have two or three sea patrol ships here. It's a lot of money to fuel them and it's a really big ocean to be able to be looking for vessels that might be breaking fishing regulations say or fishing in areas that they shouldn't. They can't come within a certain amount of miles to any of our local atolls here but for the most part, they're able to go out and fish the entire Marshall Islands if that's where they've given their rights to. Am I concerned if fishing will get to a point where we won't be able to make our livelihood off of it? Yes, there's definitely a concern there. That is why I feel we have our Marine Resource Authority here to help regulate what's being loaded, to monitor the population of fish, uh, to make sure that we don't ever get to that point. You do have local fishermen who are you know, going out daily to catch the tuna that we're eating at the restaurants. So if the larger system isn't working properly to monitor and maintain those resources within the open ocean, it will have an impact on our sustainable livelihoods, which is one of the most important things for everyone living in the Marshall Islands.